Here for this problem now we're looking at the cross-sectional area very much like the other ones but the cross-sectional area is going to be um, it's an isosceles right triangle with the hypotenuse being the side um, that's the base of this structure so again, I'm going to slice this off and then um, start by trying to show what this area would be this cross-sectional area would be for this regular shape that doesn't have a variable side so with that um, you know it's, it's going to be four here and four here for a total of eight but I'm going to pause that and then take a look at what this cross-sectional area or shape would be and we talk about this area so this is a right angle here so if you think about a right triangle and an isosceles right triangle, so these are the same, and we also call these a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So you might recall these from your trigonometry days, maybe your geometry days. And the ratio of these sides would be like, this would be square root of two, one, one, or it might be, if it's on a unit circle, one, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. Uh, but that's really uh, not too important as far as what we're dealing with, except this. Let me rotate this a little bit. So here's the bottom of it, which is going to be this side here. And what we're talking about, we have this whole length along here. I'm going to break it up into a region of 4 and a region of 4. And I didn't draw it well enough, so let me redraw this part. There and there. Okay, so here's, still not great, but here's my right triangle. And if I were to slice along here, being a isosceles right triangle, if I do a line from here down, this is a right angle this side is the same as this side now so if this is four down here for that half it's four up here as well and so the area of this triangle is one half of well the area for the whole triangle is one half of this whole base which is eight times the height we found to be four so that's going to be 16. So if the, this this triangle that is formed, and those they're going to be the whole way down. If the triangle has an area of 16, that's the cross sectional, and this distance here is four. This is going from five to nine. 16 times 4 is 64 cubic units. So now we need to look at this other part that is cut off this other triangle. Let's see if I can get this, give myself some more space here. Okay. Let's go to the next page. So if we have this triangle here, so that's the base and it's got a variable base. Well, we can easily see. Then we have a rise of 4, a run of 5, so y equals 4 over 5x, so that's this. And the same principle holds that if this part is 4 fifths x, and this part is 4 fifths x, given that it's an isosceles right triangle, this give you right angle this would be 45 here this would be 45 here so this would also be 4 fifths x so the cross-sectional area of this whole thing going from 0 up to 5 is going to be so this cross-sectional area is going to be one half of the base which is 8 fifths x that's four fifths plus four fifths times four fifths x the two and the eight can reduce 
So I get a 16 over 25 times x squared. So now we're looking at a variable length, I guess we're going to call that. So integral from 0 to 5, because it's going from 0 to 5, of this 16 over 25 x q x sorry x squared dx so that'll give us 16 over 25 x cubed over 3 from 0 to 5 and that's going to give us 16 over 25 times 5 cubed over 3 minus 0 cubed over 3. So it's 16 over 25 times 125 over 3, because uh, part 0. This reduces here and here, leaves us with a 5. So we end up with 80 over 3. So if we take <clears throat> our 80 over 3, And we add it to the other part that was 64. Get our common denominator, 3 over 3. And we end up with 192. And 80 is 272 over 3. I know this little, that one's a little messy. It was tough to see because we have this right triangle. Then I'm making the hypotenuse on the bottom. And then we cut it and come up with the other triangle to get the height. I hope that makes some sense about how that comes together. Okay, good luck.